Today is day three for the Come Follow Me study for this week, July 8th through the 14th. They never did fall away. Alma 23 through 29. Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. Alma 24, 28 through 30 and chapter 25. Our most bitter enemies are those who were once numbered among us. Alma 24, 28 through 30. Now the greatest number of those of the Lamanites who slew so many of their brethren were Amalekites and Amulonites. The greatest number of whom were after the order of the Nahors. Now among those who joined the people of the Lord, there were none who were Amalekites or Amulonites, or who were of the order of Nahor, but they were actual descendants of Laman and Lemuel. And thus we can plainly discern that after a people have been once enlightened by the Spirit of God and have had great knowledge of things pertaining to righteousness, and then have fallen away into sin and transgression, they become more hardened. Why did the Amalekites and the Amulonites not join the church? Alma 24.30 continued, And thus their state becomes worse than though they had never known these things. A person who falls away from the church after having been a member is typically worse than if they had never known these things. The prophet Joseph Smith explained this position in a conversation with another member. A brother, Isaac Bahunin, once told the prophet Joseph Smith, If I would leave this church, I would not do as those men have done. I would go to some remote place where Mormonism had never been heard of, settle down, and no one would ever learn that I knew anything about it. The great seer immediately replied, Brother Bahunin, you don't know what you would do. No doubt these men once thought as you do. Before you joined this church, you stood on neutral ground. When the gospel was preached, good and evil were set before you. You could choose either or neither. There were two opposite masters inviting you to serve them. When you joined this church, you enlisted to serve God. When you did that, you left the neutral ground, and you never can get back on it. Should you forsake the master, you enlisted to serve, it would be by the instigation of the evil one, and you will follow his dictation and be his servant. He, Joseph Smith, emphasized the fact that a man or woman who had not taken sides either with Christ or Belial could maintain a neutral position. But when they enlisted, under either the one or the other, they left the neutral ground forever. Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, Then there are the dissenters who leave the church, either formally or informally, but who cannot leave it alone. Usually anxious to please worldly galleries, they are critical, or at least condescending towards the brethren. They not only seek to steady the ark, but also on occasion give it a hard shove. Often having been taught the same true doctrines as the faithful, they have nevertheless moved in the direction of dissent. They have minds hardened by pride. The prophet Joseph Smith stated in 1834, Strange as it may appear at first thought, yet it is no less strange than true, that notwithstanding all the professed determination to live godly, apostates, after turning from the faith of Christ, unless they have speedily repented, have sooner or later fallen into the snares of the wicked one, and have been left destitute of the Spirit of God, to manifest their wickedness in the eyes of multitudes. From apostates, the faithful have received the severest persecutions. Judas was rebuked and immediately betrayed his Lord into the hands of his enemies, because Satan entered into him. There is a superior intelligence bestowed upon such as obey the gospel with full purpose of heart, which if sinned against, the apostate is left naked and destitute of the Spirit of God, and he is in truth nigh unto cursing, and his end is to be burned. When once that light which was in them is taken from them, they become as much darkened as they were previously enlightened. And then no marvel if all their power should be enlisted against the truth, and they, Judas-like, seek the destruction of those who were their greatest benefactors. What nearer friend on earth or in heaven had Judas than the Savior? And his final object was to destroy him. Hebrews 6 For it is impossible for those who have once enlisted and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, saying they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to open shame. 
The prophet Joseph Smith said, after a man has sinned against the Holy Ghost, there is no repentance for him. He has got to say that the sun does not shine when he sees it. He has got to deny Jesus Christ when the heavens have been opened unto him, and to deny the plan of salvation with his eyes open to the truth of it. And from that time, he begins to be an enemy. This is the case with many apostates of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. When a man begins to be an enemy to this work, he hunts me, he seeks to kill me, and never ceases to thirst for my blood. He gets the spirit of the devil, the same spirit that they had who crucified the Lord of life, the same spirit that sins against the Holy Ghost. You cannot save such persons. You cannot bring them to repentance. They like open war, like the devil, and awful is the consequence. President Joseph Fielding Smith said, The testimony of the Spirit is so great, and the impressions and revelations of divine truth so forcefully revealed, that there comes to the recipient a conviction of the truth that he cannot forget. Therefore, when a person, once enlightened by the Spirit, so that he receives knowledge that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God in the flesh, then turns away and fights the Lord and his work, he does so against the light and testimony he has received by the power of God. Therefore, he has resigned himself to evil knowingly. Therefore, Jesus said, there is no forgiveness for such a person. Elder Bruce and McConkie said, those in this life who gain a perfect knowledge of the divinity of the gospel cause, a knowledge that comes only by revelation from the Holy Ghost, and when then link themselves with Lucifer and come out in open rebellion, also become sons of perdition. Their destiny, following their resurrection, is to be cast out with the devil and his angels. To inherit the same kingdom in a state where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Bishop Keith B. McMullen said, A millennium of experience, through sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and the powers of the universe combined, cannot approach the sublime and complete experience of one brief moment under the influence of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a spirit personage. He has power to speak to the spirit of every man and woman, boy and girl. His message is conveyed with absolute certainty. This revealed knowledge constitutes a personal testimony and witness of the truth. Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, Those who turn from the light and truth of the gospel, who give themselves up to Satan, who enlist in his cause, supporting and sustaining it, and who thereby become his children, by such a course sin unto death. From them there is neither repentance, forgiveness, nor any hope whatever of salvation of any kind. As children of Satan, they are sons of perdition. Whosoever bringeth forth evil works, the same becometh the child of the devil. And he hearkeneth unto his voice, and doth follow him. And whosoever doeth this must receive his wages of him. Therefore, for his wages he receiveth death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness, being dead unto all good works. President Joseph Fielding Smith said, We think we, most of us, have made a dreadful but not unpardonable mistake in thinking that the sons of perdition will be very few. I have heard some say they can be counted on the fingers of one hand. Where this thought originated, I do not know. In my thinking, there will be a large number, exceedingly large, that will become sons of perdition. Imagine you have received the following letter. Dear blank, you are hereby called as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Your mission assignment is very special. You are assigned to share the gospel with a people who look upon you as a bitter enemy. They are wild and ferocious people who delight in murdering and robbing missionaries. They worship idols and are living in conditions of gross wickedness. They will probably cast you out of their cities, mock you, spit upon you, or cast you into prison where you might be tortured or at best left hungry and naked. Yet the Lord loves them. They are his children, and he desires you to take his gospel to them. The work will not be easy. In fact, it will be very dangerous. But the time to preach the gospel to them is now. How would you react to this call? What could possibly motivate you to accept it? Could any joy compensate for the possible pain and suffering such an assignment might bring you? Ammon and his brothers accepted such a call. 
Alma experienced similar challenges among his own people. These men recorded the feelings which resulted from their efforts to share the gospel with others. Chapter 25, Lamanite Aggression Spread The seed of the priests of Noah perish, as Abinadi prophesied. Many Lamanites are converted and join the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. They believe in Christ and keep the law of Moses. About 90 to 77 BC. Repentant Lamanites martyred by the seed of Amulon. Alma 25, 1-7. And behold, now it came to pass that those Lamanites were more angry because they had slain their brethren. Therefore they swore vengeance upon the Nephites, and they did no more attempt to slay the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi at that time. But they took their armies and went over into the borders of the land of Zarahemla, and fell upon the people who were in the land of Ammonihah and destroyed them. And after that they had many battles with the Nephites, in the which they were driven and slain. And among the Lamanites who were slain were almost all the seed of Amulon and his brethren, who were the priest of Noah, and they were slain by the hands of the Nephites. And the remainder, having fled into the east wilderness, and having usurped the power and authority over the Lamanites, caused that many of the Lamanites should perish by fire because of their belief. For many of them, after having suffered much loss and so many afflictions, began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached to them in their land. Therefore they began to disbelieve the traditions of their fathers, and to believe in the Lord, and that he gave great power unto the Nephites, and thus there were many of them converted in the wilderness. And it came to pass that those rulers who were the remnant of the children of Amulon caused that they should be put to death, yea, all those that believed in these things. Abinadi's Prophecy of God's Vengeance Fulfilled Alma 25, 1-12 records the fulfillment of Abinadi's prophecy regarding the wicked priests of King Noah. Mosiah 17, And it will come to pass that ye shall be afflicted with all manner of diseases because of your iniquities. Yea, and ye shall be smitten on every hand, and shall be driven and scattered to and fro, even as a wild flock is driven by wild and ferocious beasts. And in that day ye shall be hunted, and ye shall be taken by the hand of your enemies. And then ye shall suffer, as I suffer, the pains of death by fire. Thus God executeth vengeance upon those that destroy his people. Alma 25, 8-12 Now this martyrdom caused that many of their brethren should be stirred up to anger, and there began to be contention in the wilderness, and the Lamanites began to hunt the seed of Amulon and his brethren, and began to slay them, and they fled into the east wilderness. And behold, they were hunted at this day by the Lamanites. Thus the words of Abinadi were brought to pass, which he said concerning the seed of the priest who caused that he should suffer death by fire. For he said unto them, what ye shall do unto me shall be a type of things to come. And now Abinadi was the first that suffereth death by fire because of his belief in God. Now this is what he meant, that many should suffer death by fire, according as he had suffered. And he said unto the priest of Noah that their seed should cause many to be put to death in the like manner as he was, and that they should be scattered abroad and slain, even as a sheep, having no shepherd, is driven and slain by wild beasts. And now behold, these words were verified, for they were driven by the Lamanites, and they were hunted, and they were smitten. No town Mormon documented for the reader the fulfillment of the prophecies of Abinadi. Consider the results of those who reject the prophets like Abinadi and claim that the prophet has sinned. Modern revelation also contains a warning to those who lift up the heel against mine anointed. Doctrine and Covenants 121 Cursed are all those that shall lift up the heel against mine anointed, saith the Lord, and cry, They have sinned, when they have not sinned before me, saith the Lord, but have done that which was meet in mine eyes, and which I commanded them. But those who cry transgression do it because they are the servants of sin, and are the children of disobedience themselves. And those who swear falsely against my servants, that they might bring them into bondage and death, woe unto them, because they have offended my little ones, they shall be severed from the ordinances of mine house. Their basket shall not be full. Their houses and their barns shall perish, and they themselves shall be despised of those that flattereth them. They shall not have right to the priesthood, nor their posterity after them for generation to generation. It had been better for them that a millstone had been hanged about their necks, and they drowned in the depth of the sea. 
Now, how events developed naturally and led to the destruction of Ammonihah. Some could even have said it was not some miraculous destruction sent from God against Ammonihah. The Lamanites went on the rampage after fighting the battle with the anti Nephi Lehi's, those Lamanites who had been converted by the mission of the sons of Mosiah. Unfortunately, the people of Ammonihah caught the brunt of their rage. It had nothing to do with God's justice. We have a modern example of such an attitude. In 1939, Elder Joseph Fielding Smith, later to become the 10th president of the church, visited Europe. Nazi Germany was on the rampage, and Europe was plunging into war. On his return, he was asked to speak to a group in Salt Lake City. Elder Smith said at that meeting, In my remarks, I said that the present trouble had come upon the world because of its wickedness, and that we in the United States were just as wicked as the people of Europe, and therefore we could not escape. That was in January 1940. Yet how many Americans saw the fulfillment of that prophecy as spiritually significant? How many saw our involvement in World War II as only the natural consequences of political events? Such is the power of Satan, to blind the eyes of men. Seeing the power of God upon the Nephites leads many Lamanites to repent. Alma 25, 13-15 And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that they could not overpower the Lamanites, they returned again to their own land, and many of them came over to dwell in the land of Ishmael and the land of Nephi, and did join themselves to the people of God, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And they did also bury their weapons of war according as their brethren had. And they began to be a righteous people, and they did walk in the ways of the Lord, and did observe to keep his commandments and his statutes. Yea, and they did keep the law of Moses. For it was expedient that they should keep the law of Moses as yet, for it was not all fulfilled. But notwithstanding the law of Moses, they did look forward to the coming of Christ, considering that the law of Moses was a type of his coming, and believing that they must keep those outward performances until the time that he should be revealed unto them. Previously Abinadi had taught, Mosiah 13, I say unto you that it is expedient that ye should keep the law of Moses as yet, but I say unto you that the time shall come when it shall no more be expedient to keep the law of Moses. And moreover, I say unto you that salvation doth not come by the law alone. And were it not for the atonement which God himself shall make for the sins and iniquities of his people, that they must unavoidably perish, notwithstanding the law of Moses. Alma 25, 16. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses, but the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ. And thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy, which spake of those things to come. The converted Lamanites understood, as did the righteous Nephites, that salvation did not come through obedience to the law of Moses alone. The converted Lamanites understood that the law of Moses served an important purpose until the Savior completed his mission in mortality. Through observance of the law of Moses, these Lamanites could look forward to the coming of Christ, with the law serving as a type or representation of Christ and his mission. Thus they kept the law of Moses because they had been commanded to do so, and by living with faith in Christ, they received a remission of their sins. How did the anti-Nephi-Lehi's change? Alma 25, 17. And now behold, Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Himni and their brethren did rejoice exceedingly for the success which they had had among the Lamanites, saying that the Lord had granted unto them according to their prayers, and that he had also verified his word unto them in every particular. Their prayer was described in Alma 17. They fasted much and prayed that the Lord would grant unto them a portion of his spirit to go with them and abide with them, that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, if it were possible, their brethren, the Lamanites, to the knowledge of the truth, to the knowledge of the baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. One of the great lessons that emerges from this section of the book of Alma is that God always keeps his promises. The Lord had told King Mosiah that many would believe his son's teachings and that he would deliver them out of the hands of the Lamanites. For the fulfillment of these prophecies, see Alma 17, 4, 35-39, 19, 22-23, 26, 1-4. This is just one of the numerous scriptural illustrations that reinforce the doctrinal truth that God is bound when we do what he says.